All right, now that is gonna go in here and get welded in. I'm gonna push this in flush to this. Is this starting to make sense now? We don't want our hole all blown out. Nobody likes a blown out hole, but it's good now. As you can see, we got a problem. One tie is going straight, the other one's cocked off at an angle. So you see that little tiny tree right there? Well, I was getting real close to it, and this tire just brushed the base of it. So I thought if I just turned the wheel just a little bit, I could just kind of like sneak it around the tree. Well, it didn't. It dug right into the tree, and it kind of went up the tree, and it actually bent it, uh, bent something here. So. What we gotta do is I'm gonna take this axle out and we gotta try to figure out what to do because something's bent or ripped or torn or, or something, so. So here's the issue, and you can see we got a broken weld here. So that parted ways, and this is pushed back. Now if you sight down that, you can see that this side kicks over right here. So that's the bottom. So what we got to do is we got to force this over that way, and now this hole's all wallowed out. You can see how far off it's off, and then you can see how the metal's actually ripped right there. Now, all of these bushings are the same size. There's four of them, top, bottom, uh, left and right, and one bushing fits everything. So you can see how that, they're press. you just press them in, you just pound them in by hand, but they'll go in. So you can see how that fits there. Well, you can see how that fits there. So not only is the hole too big, we gotta bush it down. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna knock this over and then I'm gonna cut a piece of black iron pipe as a bushing to weld into there and then we'll drill the interior of it to fit one of these bushings. So, sounds easy, but without really the proper tools, uh, it's going to be a little difficult, but you know, this is all stuff. Not everybody has uh, lathes and milling machines and all that other stuff. You know, a lot of times you got just like what I got and uh, you got some ambition and you want to save a little bit of money. Now, if this acts up again and it, and it gives me problems down the road, I can get a cast iron axle for this for like 80 bucks. So then this wouldn't be a problem, but uh, my yard is super, super small. So uh, if I can get this patched up, it'll pretty much last for a real long time. So we got a broken weld here on this side and the other side actually developing a crack as well. So we'll grind that out and we'll uh, put a little bit of weld on that too. See how that's pretty much in line there? How that is not, we gotta persuade that back into place. So I've got just the persuasion tool right here. Oh, and roughly, it's in line right now. I just gotta contour it a little bit and massage it. Now I gotta to try to determine if I've got both sides at the, the same. So I'm just gonna use this, touch it down on the outside edge. There we go. So 
that's the approximate height. So we'll come over here and that should be about the same and it's not. If you look right down there you'll see that I've got about oh an eighth of an inch so that means that this needs to come down that way just a little bit more. There it is. So now I've got this angle set at just about the same angle as that one there. It's not like this is a car. As long as we get it fairly close, it should be fine. Now this is where we get to try out this bad boy. I love this tool. I'm just gonna rough out to what I think we need. Uh, this doesn't have to be super precision. I'm just gonna try to simulate what's there. This thing is so awesome. All right, now that is gonna go in here and get welded in. I'm gonna push this in flush to this. Is this starting to make sense now? This quite doesn't fit through there. So I'm just gonna put a little flat spot on each side of this just so I can get it to fit in. That's all I need to do. <laughs> There, does that make sense now? Then we're gonna weld this all the way around here. That simulates this hole now not being wallowed out. And then we will drill, after it's welded, the inside of that to accept this bushing. Piece of cake. And you see how this now kind of looks like that? When it's all said and done, this new bushing that we make will look just like the original one that's there or pretty close to it. All right, we're getting to the point where we're almost done and we just gotta tap this bushing so it sits nice and flat across that surface. There it is. All right, let's get to welding. So ideally, what I'd like to do is I'd like to use the MIG welder. I think that's kind of, that would provide the best uh, looking surface finish, but the issue being is that there's a lot of paint on the back side And I want to get some weld down in there uh, And I can't in MIG welding isn't necessarily uh, Very tolerant to areas where you can't clean and get paint off it plus it's got a little bit of grease in here So uh, not that it's the the best way of doing it, but 6011 stick welding is a little bit more forgiving than uh, than the other processes so it's going to be a little bit harder because it's thin, but I'm going to stick weld it. Plus, I like stick welding anyways. We're getting down there. So, for this repair, I've got some 332nds, uh, 6011 rods, and uh, we're going to use those. So the next step would be to set up the welder, but how do you know what settings to set it at? We know we've got three 30 seconds rods. Here's a little handy app uh, for you. So grab your cellular apparatus, and I've got an app called Miller Welds, and you can get it right on the Play Store, or you, can, you don't even have to get the app. You can just look it up online. Uh, but this will give you that you can select the process that you're working on. So for us, we're going to be stick welding. Then you can pick your material. We're stick welding uh, uh, mild steel. And we're looking for 6011, 330 seconds right there. So 6010 rods and 6011 will all have the same uh, specifications. Suggested amperage range is 40 to 85 amps. And it says use less amps on thin metal, more on thick metal. Uh, DC electrode positive uh, has the most penetration. Uh, DC electronegative straight polarity. Uh, I believe it's going to have less. It got cut off. Uh, it's a deep penetrating rod. It's an all position rod. Uh, it's for minimum prep, rough bead, high spatter. So this is what I was telling you about the minimum prep. That's why it's a good rod for this because that is painted uh, and some of these little nooks and crannies will be hard to get, uh, get into. So the 6011 is a little more forgiven.
Okay, so right here. So these electrodes are also suited for working on material which are rusty, painted, galvanized, or other dirty work surfaces. What's going to make it difficult is we got some pretty poor fit up here. So we're just going to have to probably like do a little bit, do a little more, do a little more. So the low side was 40 amps, and whereas this is just like a stamped steel, we're going to go less. We'll probably go around 30. She's not the prettiest thing, but the hole's not all wallowed out now. So you can see we got a cracked bead right here. I'm gonna have to do a little metal prep there. And we got a cracked bead right here. And while I got the grinder out, I'm gonna grind this flat because it has to be like that so that that bushing will fit in there nice and smooth. So the next thing we gotta do is we gotta drill this hole out to size it for that bushing. So one inch is too big and seven eighths, which is this if it's buried all the way, is too small. So it actually works out to be like 15 sixteenths. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bury this bit to seven eighths and then maybe use like a rasp to just rasp, rasp out the hole a little bit so we can get that bushing in. There. Now it's actually all uh, it's all reamed out. All I did is I just used this uh, little rasp. It's a set that I got. Real, it's just a cheap set I got from Harbor Freight a while ago. But it works good for doing stuff like this. So I got the hole close, then just rasped it out. Now you can see this side is actually a little loose over here. But this side actually fits nice and tight. So I can press that right in just like that. So that gives a nice snug fit and that's what we want. We don't want our hole all blown out. Nobody likes a blown out hole, but it's good now. God only knows how that developed, but we got one there and we got one there. We've got to V that out. I've got to groove it out a little bit. So we got a place for the weld to go. If you just weld over that, it's just going to crack again. Same thing there. You see how fine that is? So we got to open that up and get down in it. So this will be a good opportunity to try out a disc. A company sent me this. It's kind of like along the ideas of uh, the uh, metal cutting discs that aren't abrasive. So this is a diamond blade cutting disc and it's by a company called Graph Black Professional. So let's give it a whirl. And this one's a four and a half inch. And I said, I think it says up to a thousand cuts. Yeah, up to a thousand cuts, depending on the working material thickness. Uh, it's burst proof, which is pretty good, you know, because that's how a lot of these injuries happen. People using the disc improperly, it fetches up, and uh, then you have the thing blow up in your face. So uh, it doesn't look like it matters uh, as far as direction. I know that the uh, Lennox blades do matter which way they go. This one says it can go either way according to this arrow. It's good for metal, angle iron, metal pipes, rebar, and sheet metal. 
and uh, max RPM 13,200 so yeah let's give it a whirl that'll be good to I'm gonna use that to just slice into this along that crack just to open it up a little bit to V it out And I've talked to you about this before. Um, you guys can use the tool to tighten this down if you want. Uh, for you know, 30 years, 30 years plus that I've been doing fabrication work, I've yet to use a uh, tool to take off or put on a wheel. I just never found it necessary. Yeah, it doesn't take much. That crack is such a hairline crack but all we did is just uh, notch that out just a little bit so we got a place for the weld to go. So now what I'm going to do is you can see how this bushing's all chewed up. So I ordered a new one. Uh, actually, I ordered uh, two new bushings for it. So the stress on these, these get tore up on the bottom. The top sides really don't uh, have any wear whatsoever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the good ones in the bottom. And then when the new ones come in, it's just a matter of popping that cap off. You remember the cap that I pried off of the screwdriver? And then you just slide this bushing down in and put the cap back on. So that's an easy... Uh, swap out. So for now I'm going to put the good bushings on the bottom and uh, so that way we can get it all back together. But look how good uh, that fits in there. That fits in there nice. It actually fits in there way better than this side. This side's actually just kind of like falls in. So if anything the side we repaired now is actually better than the other side. So. Alright let's go get it back together. And there we go guys, we're all back together and actually it uh, goes a lot better than it uh, did before. You know, it just a lot of that slop is taken out of that. This one actually had a bunch of slop in it when I got it and uh, I noticed it and I just never really thought it would be a big problem but we got it fixed now and uh, like I said I've got two new bushings coming for the top. It's just a matter of prying those out, prying the new ones in and I have those new snap caps that go on the top too. Those are only like seven bucks. So yeah, good as new. It'll probably outlast me, I would imagine. Picked this bagger up for free uh, because it was broken and it had some torn stuff. Uh, I fabricated this uh, quick detach hitch. It's a two inch receiver like you'd have on a vehicle. Uh, but right now I have it set up to hold a bagger and it'll also hold a uh, two inch receiver from a hitch. I'll put links to those videos down in the description and down in the comments if you guys are interested. That's all there is to it guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering what I work on before it even makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have the links down below. If this is something you like, please don't forget to rate comment and subscribe. Be sure to hit the bell notification so you can be alerted of upcoming videos. New video every Friday. Thanks for watching guys. Have a good day. I'll see you next week. Stay safe. Come, come.